वेलकम टू अ न्यू सेशन ऑफ द कंसेप्ट ऑफ फिजिक्स टूडे वी शैल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर वॉट आर द वेरियस पार्ट ऑफ द स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर इज अ डिवाइस विच इज यूज टू मेजर द रीडिंग्स कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग टू द ऑप्टिकल एक्सपेरिमेंट्स इन द स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर वी हैव दिस apparatus so the spectrometer consists of three basic parts first is the collimator second is the prism table and third is the telescope in the spectrometer we have basically a table base this you can see this is the table base on which the collimator the telescope and the prism tables are mounted so in the table base we have a fine adjusting knob and a table base lock screw so when we lock this table base then whole of the assembly of the spectrometer will not move now coming to the collimator so collimator is a tube consisting of two convex lens so in the collimator there is a slit plate attached to the collimator you can see there is a slit plate we have shown a rectangular slit here and a slit with adjust screw is also attached to the slit plate when we open or close the slit screw then accordingly the slit width will increase or the slit width will decrease so upon changing the unlocking the slit screw the slit width can be changed so according to our requirement we adjust the slit width of the slit plate where is the slit plate used the collimator is always towards the source of the light suppose we have here a sodium lamp or a mercury source so the collimator is always pointing towards the source of light since the light beam will be having its diverged beam in all the direction so the slit plate attached to the collimator will allow only a narrow beam of light to enter inside the collimator and since the slit plate is a rectangular in shape so the light will fall or will emerge inside the collimator in a shape of rectangle with the help of the screw we can adjust the slit width that how much width we want of the slit plate then you can see another screw attached to the collimator so what happens here that when the source of light or the sodium lamp beam is coming inside the collimator through this slit then what happens that due to the convex lenses placed inside it the beam which is coming gets focused at particular point and then gets fall upon the second and then a parallel beam of light is emerged out of the second convex lens so these two convex lenses are used to focus the beam of light so the no focus knob is used to set the focus if we are changing this focus then it may focus at some other point and hence the image that is being formed could be non intense it could be broader it could be a blurred image so on changing this screw knob or the focus knob we can intensify the beam as well as we can focus our beam also we can have a sharp image 
of the source of light and the source of light is taking the shape of the shape of the slit plate so this is the use of the collimator this was all about the collimator so collimator is basically used to collimate the beam means it is used to make a parallel beam of light where the sodium source was having a diverged beam so after the beam crosses the collimator we get a parallel beam of light and the parallel beam of light will emerge out of the collimator due to the assembly of the two convex lens inside the collimator and the intensity of the uh, source of light could be adjusted with the help of the slit width adjust screw also so next coming to the second part of the spectrometer that is the telescope so in the telescope also we use assembly of two convex lens and again these convex lens will focus the light beam that falls on the optical instrument which will be placed on the prism table and after the optical effect that image will be formed through the telescope on the eyes of the <coughs> recorder or the person who is performing the experiment so in the telescope also we have a screw this screw is also called the focus knob again the focus knobs are used to since a parallel beam of light is coming after the optical the process so when it falls on the convex lens assembly it again gets converged and diverged and hence the focus is formed on the eyes of the manual or the user that is using using the spectrometer so the telescope is used to form the image of the optical experiment or the optical effect on the eyes of the experimentalist so the telescope also has an eyepiece this eyepiece has a cross wire inside it so what you see if you see inside the eyepiece you see a cross wire like this so while taking the readings what we try to do that the slit that we are finding we try to superimpose the slit on the cross wire and when the slit is superimposed on the cross wire there the reading is recorded so this was how the telescope works this was the part that was called the collimator so telescope is always towards the experimentalist and collimator is always pointing towards the source of light the third part of the spectrometer is the prism table so this assembly this center portion is called the prism table where this prism table is used for placing the optical devices such as prism glass slab or you can say the diffraction gratings so this is a table like top which is used to keep the prism or the diffraction gratings and the processes like reflection refraction diffraction such types of processes are used to observe using the spectrometer so in the prism table this is the prism table this is the prism and this is a leveler and a screw is attached here to the prism table which can increase or decrease the height of the prism table such that we have to adjust the height of the prism table such that the light coming out of the collimator and the when the light will fall on the prism or the diffraction grating the height of the prism or the diffraction grating should be at proper height of the collimator and the telescope or you can say that the prism collimator and the telescope 
should be in one line. The line of action should be same. It should be not such that the prism is placed at lower height than the collimator or telescope that the light just overpasses it or the height of the prism table is such such height at a such a height that the prism is at a greater height and the light is passing beneath it. So the prism table or the prism should be placed at an optical height and with this help of the screw that is the prism table lock screw when we adjust the optimum height of the prism table then the screw is locked to that particular position. Then this you can see this portion you can see this is a rotating prism table or a rotating telescope base. So when you have to take the readings from one end to the other end so the word or the telescope can be rotated freely from using this rotating telescope base. And in the rotating telescope base you see this screw this screw is called the telescope rotating lock screw. If you don't want to rotate the telescope, you want to fix the telescope at one particular position, then you tighten the screw and the telescope will not move. And if you want fine adjustment of the telescope, supposing that the cross wire and the slit are somewhere here, the cross wire is here and the slit is here. And when you move the telescope with your hand, then the slit is not able to come at the cross wire. So, with the help of this screw, this telescope rotating fine adjust knob, with this screw, you can rotate the telescope very slowly, very with very fine adjustment, you can just move the slit to the cross wire and you can take the reading. So, for finer adjustment, you, know, you need not hold the telescope with your hand and rotate it with your hand. You can rotate the screw with this fine adjust knob and can slide the slit at the cross wire. So this screw was to lock the telescope and this screw was to finely adjust the telescope at the point where the slit and the cross wires are meeting each other. So, you can see this was the table base lock screw where you want to lock these everything and here is the prism table lock screw. This is the eyepiece with cross hairs. Now next part is the spirit level. So, what is the role of the spirit level? As the word says spirit level. So, the spirit level is used to check the leveling of the spectrometer. So what we say in the spirit level you will find that there are two parallel lines and in between the parallel lines you see that there is a watery medium inside it uh, and there is an air bubble. So when you place the spirit level anywhere on a horizontal surface if the horizontal surface is perfectly horizontal or it is a level surface, you will always find this air bubble in the center. If the air bubble has shifted to this point or it is not at the center point, if it is shifted here, this means that the table is bent in, is, a, is vertically inclined. It has an inclination. So, with the help of the leveling screws, we will adjust the level of the prism table. So what we do for the leveling of the prism table, we take the spirit level and place the spirit level on the prism table. So when you will place the spirit level on the prism table, you will see where is this air bubble. If there is an air bubble in this side, you will find that there are three screws on the prism table itself. So, beneath the prism table there will be three screws also. The screws are placed at exactly at the vertices of the equilateral triangle. So, by unscrewing the screws, these knobs, you will find that the air bubble will move in a particular direction. 
so you will unscrew the screws or you will tighten the screw in such a way that the air bubble is exactly at the center of these two lines so when you find that the air bubble is exactly at the center between the two lines of the spirit table then you find that the prism table is balanced so you will again lift the spirit level and place somewhere else on the prism table and again check it for the leveling of the prism base you can also keep this uh, spirit level on this base anywhere on the spectrometer and everywhere the spectrometer should be balanced and in some spectrometers also we also find some screws at the bottom of the spectrometer also so by unscrewing or tightening the screw that is attached at the base of the spectrometers then also the leveling of the spectrometers can be made or the leveling can be performed so by rotating these two screws screws that are placed beneath the prism table or by unscrewing these screws or tightening the screws that are placed at the bottom of the spectrometer we can level the spectrometer but before performing the experiment it is a very necessary precaution or it is a very necessary step that the leveling of the prism table as well as the spectrometer is required so with the help of the screw level you will have to check the leveling of the prism table so by these with the help of these three screws you will have to level the prism table and the bubble air bubble in the prism table should be exactly in the middle of the two lines is that clear so i think that you are able to understand the spectrometer so spectrometer basically consists of three parts collimator the prism table and the telescope so with the help of the slit plate you will adjust the width of the slit and the slit will allow a certain amount of a beam to pass into the collimator a parallel beam of light will emerge out of the collimator which will fall on the prism or on the diffraction grating the optical instrument you are using and then after the whether it has to be a diffraction it has to be reflection refraction then again a parallel beam will enter inside the telescope and the image will be formed on the eyepiece or the eye of the experimentalist so in this way you can see the effect the optical effect that you want to see using a spectrometer also in the spectrometer there are two verniers attached and in this vernier we have a main scale and a vernier scale so by taking the reading of the main scale vernier scale and the reading of the two verniers and these two verniers are positioned exactly at an angle of 180 degrees so by with the help of the vernier readings you can calculate the angles that are associated with your optical instrument devices and you can note the optical effect whether you want to measure the angle of prism you want to measure the angle of minimum deviation you want to measure the angle of diffraction so whatever you want to study whatever angles you want to study and by converting the angles into the uh, putting the angle angular values into the formula you can calculate the wavelengths of the various source of light you are using and also you can calculate the refractive index so the verniers also have a major role and in the next module we will try to learn how to calculate the readings how to note down the least count and how to take the readings from both the verniers thank you